Okay, so before we get into this, let's set up some context. The Spyro series first started on the original PlayStation and was developed by Insomniac. All three of the Spyro games did very well, and were even games that I played when I was younger and still do to this day as they are some of my favorite collectathon games. However, after Spyro 3, Insomniac admitted that they were running out of ideas for the character and decided to drop the series. Because of this, the Spyro series was no longer exclusive to Sony systems and thus was picked up by a different company. So, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly was developed by Check 6 Games and Equinox Digital Entertainment and was published by Universal Interactive. It is the first of the Spyro games to be on multiple systems, as well as being the most infamous game in the series. But after having played the game, is it really all that bad, or is it good or just meh? Our story begins with Spyro and his friends celebrating an event in which the younger dragons are getting their own dragonflies. Then suddenly, Ripto appears with his henchmen and scatters off all the dragonflies. So it's up to Spyro to travel around the dragon realm to save all the dragonflies and stop Ripto. Okay, so simple stories aren't a bad thing. However, the execution here isn't very good. First off, Hunter and Bianca don't play very active roles, making them almost pointless in the game. Second, there's Ripto. Now, I honestly don't mind Ripto making a return. After all, he is my favorite villain in the series and makes a good counter to Spyro. But in this game, Ripto hardly does anything and doesn't play a very active role either. In fact, he only appears about three times in the game and isn't even very villainous. Spyro himself isn't very interesting either as he lacks much of a personality. In the end, the story isn't very good due to poor execution rather than its simplicity. Spyro Enter the Dragonfly is a collectathon 3D platformer. To start things off, there is a rather large hub world called the Dragon Realm. From here, you can access the other levels in the game and it is divided up into three different sections. In the Dragon Realm, Spyro will learn how to use his moves, such as being able to use his breath attacks, charge, and glide long distances, which for the most part work pretty well. Like in the old games, Spyro's health is indicated by Sparks, who changes color every time Spyro is hit. At the center of the Dragon Realm, there is a dragon statue that will grant Spyro new moves and powers when he presents special stones to the statue. These special stones can be found in the levels throughout the game. The levels themselves are pretty linear and lack much exploration, which does make it easier to find and collect the gems and dragonflies, but because the levels are so barren and empty, collecting gems becomes very tedious. Scattered throughout the levels, you will find poor so it will take you to missions that you have to complete to get more dragonflies. The missions will range from going down on a slide, saving sheep with a UFO, and even some platforming challenges. Many of the missions are quite varied, but aren't very fun. And let me just say that the Sticky Swamp Shootout mission is way worse than the Box the Yeti missions in Spyro 3. Of all the missions, the flight missions are the most interesting, since they are basically the flight levels from the previous games. In these missions, you will have to fly around to take out objects in a time limit, and they are just okay. For winning missions, you will earn dragonflies, and the purpose of collecting dragonflies is to gain access to other levels. Gems, on the other hand, are only used to pay off the bear money bags, who merely acts as a roadblock in some levels. The most annoying dragonflies to collect are the roaming dragonflies. In order to catch them, Spyro has to use his bubble breath on them, which has a short range and horrible hit detection. Spyro will get other breath attacks that are mostly used for beating up enemies. There's a fire breath for burning things, ice breath for freezing things, and lightning breath for shocking things, and and starting up machines. In the entire game, there is only one boss fight, and it's the final boss, which is a dull and annoying fight to begin with. Visually, the game looks eh. There are some levels with decent colors and okay themes, like Lalu Islands, Monkey Monastery, and the Thieves' Den. But the rest of the levels have a rather dull and empty feeling to them, which certainly doesn't help. Spyro's character model is alright, and is the only model that looks good, while the enemies and Hunter look janky and weird. Ripto looks pretty bad and has an awful talking animation, but the worst model in the entire game would be Bianca, who looks horrifying. Not only that, but the game has a pretty bad frame rate that often drops, as well as long loading screens that are quite common. As for the music, it's just okay at best. It's nothing bad, but it's really nothing that memorable either. In the end, I was quite disappointed with this game. The gameplay itself isn't a bad idea, it's the execution that really hurts the game. Levels aren't very well designed in both layout and how open, large, and empty they are. The story is quite bad and lacks any character, and not to mention the countless amount of glitches in the game. And speaking from personal experience, the game is most definitely not worth completing to 100%. Spyro Enter the Dragonfly is a bad game.
Like I said, I really love the original Spyro games, so seeing this as the first Spyro game for the PlayStation 2 is quite painful. The game is awful, and you shouldn't play it, but there were some good ideas like the different breath powers minus the bubble breath. I honestly feel more disappointed with the game than hate it, as I do know the game was rushed to be released sooner. Had the development team been given more time, then I think the game could have turned out decently. Sure, probably not as amazing as the originals, but still good. After all, they originally wanted to have 120 dragonflies and over 25 levels in the game, and I really think they could have done a good job. But in the end, it became one of the worst collectathon games for the PlayStation 2 that I've played thus far, and the last collectathon game in the Spyro series. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review and found it to be rather informative. If you'd like to see more reviews, please check out my channel. And please don't forget to subscribe. And if there are any other PS2 games you'd like to see me review in the future, please leave a suggestion down below. Well, I'm MCB the PS2 Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.